everybody. Welcome back to Good Night Lighthouse. I'm Miss Dorothy and I'm here to read you another story. And I'm here to read you another story about pirates. We've had a lot of pirate books lately. And this one is really fun because it's called How I Became a Pirate. How I Became a Pirate. This little boy becomes a pirate in a very crazy way. But what's going to happen? Can he really go off and become a pirate? What about his mom and dad? What about his home? We need to get into this book and find out how he becomes a pirate and what happens when he's a pirate. Are you ready to get inside this pirate book with Miss Dorothy? Good. I need you to sit up and listen up because here we go. How I Became a Pirate, written by Melinda Long, illustrated by David Shannon. <clears throat> pirates have green teeth, when they have any teeth at all. I know about pirates, because one day, when I was at the beach building a sandcastle and minding my own business, a pirate ship sailed into view. I knew what it was, because its flag had a skull and crossbones on it, and because I could hear the pirates singing. Hey ho, blow the man down, hey ho, blow the man down. They were a little off key. He's building a big sandcastle. It looks like he's the only one that sees the pirate ship. I tried to tell Dad, but he was busy setting up the beach umbrella. I tried to tell Mom, but she was busy slathering my baby sister with sunblock. So I went back to my sandcastle, but I kept an eye on the pirates. By then, they were rowing to shore. Here they come, but nobody's listening to them. When they landed, the head pirate climbed out of the boat and yelled, Ahoy there, matey! Be this the Spanish main? Um, no, I said. This is North Beach. Shiver me timbers, the pirate said. We must have taken a wrong turn at Bora Bora. They're not where they thought they were. He walked around my sandcastle. He looked at the moat, then yelled back to his crew. He's a digger! He's a good one to boot! A good one to boot! The others agreed. What be your name, matey? The head pirate asked. Jeremy Jacobs, sir, I told him. The pirates are really impressed with his sandcastle. Well, Jeremy Jacob, he said, you're looking at Braid Beer and his crew. We've been needing a digger like yourself. We've a treasure chest to bury. Aye, treasure, the others shouted. You're coming with us, Braid Beer told me. I didn't think Mom and Dad would mind, as long as I got back in time for soccer practice the next day. He's going to go with them because they need someone to dig up a treasure chest. That's how I became a pirate. Look at him, he's so excited on the back of the pirate's little boat. As soon as we were on board, Braid Beer showed me the chest of gold and jewels. Got to find a safe place for this here treasure. It's high time we're off, he announced. We're off, we all shouted, and then we set sail. They're going off to find a place to dig to bury their treasure. There was plenty to do on board. The pirates taught me to sing sea chanties, the louder the better, and to say real pirate stuff like landlubber and scurvy dog. By dinner time, I could speak pirate perfectly. I also learned pirate manners. Braid Beer pounded his fist on the table and yelled, Down the hatch, me laddies! Down the hatch, we all shouted. Braid Beer gulped his food and said, Hand over the meat. The meat, we all roared. Nobody told us to finish our spinach. There wasn't any. Or to chew up our carrots. There weren't any allowed on board. We talked with our mouth full, and nobody said please or thank you. Uh-oh. There's no mom or dad there to teach them to use good manners. After dinner, I tried to teach the pirates to play soccer, Braid Beard kicked the ball and yelled, Arg soccer! Arg soccer! The crew yelled. Then everybody dove for the ball at once and it rolled right off the deck. After it, me hearties! Braid Beard commanded. After it? We all whispered because there's a shark in the water. We fought over who would go get the ball, but it didn't matter anyway because a shark came along and swallowed it in one gulp. So much for soccer. By now it was past my bedtime, but nobody tells pirates to go to bed, to take a bath, or to brush their teeth. Um, maybe that's why their teeth are green. Pirates sleep with one eye open, just in case, and they don't change into pajamas unless they want to. Pirates do anything they don't want to, except for maybe swabbing the decks. I wanted to be a pirate forever! Uh-oh, he's happy that there's no rules on the pirate ship. 
But then I found out what else they don't do. When I couldn't stay awake any longer, I asked Braidbeard to tuck me in and read me a story. Tuck you in, he bellowed. Pirates don't tuck. No tucking, the crew cried. And the only thing they had to read was a map. Um, don't you have any books, I asked. Braid Bear looked confused. Books? I didn't even bother to ask about a good night kiss. Oh, no, because his mom and dad aren't there. There's nobody to tuck him in, nobody to read him a story. Maybe it's not good to be in a place without any rules. It wasn't easy to fall asleep without a story, but I was finally dozing off when a storm broke. Thunder boomed and lightning flashed. I tried to hide under the covers as waves slammed against the ship, but I kept falling out of my hammock. I couldn't find anyone in the cabin. They were all on deck. Lower the sails, Braidbeer shouted. Batten down the hatches. Everybody ran around yelling and lowering and battening. Nobody had time to sit close and tell me it would be over soon. Nobody even noticed me. I decided that I didn't want to be a pirate after all. He realized it's better to be with his mom and dad than in a place where pirates are. Just then, flash, crash, crack, lightning hit the mast and split it right down the middle. What do we do now, yelled one of the pirates. We'll have to turn back, called another. But the treasure, hollowed Braid Beard. Where will we borrow the treasure? I stepped forward. Maybe I can help, I shouted over the wind. I think I know the perfect digging spot. He's got an idea. When the storm was over, we rode back to shore and buried the chest. We drew a map so we could find the treasure again. But I don't think I'll need it because the map says Jeremy Jacob's backyard. After the pirates repaired the ship and got ready to set sail, before they left, Braid Bear handed me a flag and said, You make a fine pirate, Jeremy Jacob. Guard that treasure well. We'll be back to get it soon enough. Soon enough, the crew repeated. And if you ever need us, Braid Bear added, just run the Jolly Roger up yonder pole. Up yonder pole, the others shouted. And maybe I will, but not today. I have soccer practice. Yay, he made it home for soccer practice. And look, the name of his soccer team are the Pirates. He really is a pirate. His pirates came on shore when he was on the beach and he went off on an adventure with them and he thought it was all great because there was nobody there for rules or to tell him what to do or what to eat. But then at bedtime he realized, wow, I don't have anybody here to read me a story or tuck me in. I really need my mom and dad. He realized how much he missed his mom and dad and how much his mom and dad do for him. And it's better to be home where there's vegetables and rules because that's where your mom and dad are. So he had his pirate adventure and then he went back home where he belonged. And that is how he became a pirate. What an exciting book. I don't know if a pirate ship pulled up on the beach if I would get on it. I think I'd be a little worried about that. But I sure would ask my mom and dad before I did. I hope you remember that when you're at the beach. Don't do anything without asking mom and dad first. And you know what? Maybe you can go build a big sandcastle just like the little boy did before he became a pirate. But not tonight, because we can't go to the beach tonight. It's too late and it's too dark out. You're going to have to save that for another day. So as I need all my little pirates to get under their covers, get cuddled up, curled up, ready for a really good night's sleep. And tomorrow, whatever you do, listen to your mom and dad and think about all the great things they do for you. You know what? I was just thinking how great it is to have a mom that reads to you, a dad that tucks you in, somebody always there to watch over you. I really love that. And tonight, we're going to say a little prayer thanking God for our mom and dad. So will you pray with Miss Dorothy for just a minute? Fold your hands and close your eyes. Dear God, thank you for my friends. Thank you that they always come back and hear my stories. And thank you for their moms and dads and how special they are and how much they do for them. Please help my friends to remember how important it is to listen to mom and dad because mom and dad know what's best. Help them to give their mom and dads lots of hugs and kisses and show them how much they love them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, little pirates, that's it for tonight. I need you to go off to your dreaming adventures. And tomorrow, no matter what you're doing, show mom and dad how much you love them. How do you do that? Obey and obey right away. And then come back and see Miss Dorothy, because I'm going to be sitting right here, ready to read another book 
to you. Bye! Thanks for reading with Miss Dorothy. I hope you enjoyed this book, and I hope you'll come back soon to read another. What's your favorite book? Drop Miss Dorothy a note and let me know. I'll go find it, and I'll read it to you. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share. I'll see you soon.